One of the most demonstrably false ideas about the religion of Islam is that it is somehow Abrahamic. But the Quran's theology, to the extent it exists, is completely different from biblical theology. The Quran knows more about Jewish and Christian legend than it actually does about Jewish and Christian scripture, though of course it only claims to have knowledge of the latter. And while much remains uncertain about the early centuries of Islam, one thing is certain. Muslims, at some point, became very concerned about the place of Islam in history. Contrary to all appearances and evidence, Muslims wanted the world to believe that the religion of Islam was not a brand new act on the world stage. And the Quran? Well, that's simply a supplement to the Torah and Gospel. And all the biblical prophets were actually Muslims too, including Jesus. But here's something interesting. If you just take what the earliest sources say about Jesus and what the most authentic sources say about Muhammad, it leaves you wondering. What happened to Allah's prophets? From the time of Jesus to the time of Muhammad, something went seriously wrong with Allah's quality control. Apparently, trying to find a prophet in 7th century Arabia was like trying to find toilet paper during the first wave of the coronavirus pandemic. So let's look at Jesus versus Muhammad versus Satan and see just how inept Allah's prophets had become. Jesus' power over Satan is absolute and unquestioned. It's easy to read through the Gospels and find numerous examples. I'll just list a few. Jesus is repeatedly acknowledged as an exorcist, sometimes casting out demons with a single word. So great is Jesus' reputation as a healer that by the time we get to the ninth chapter of Mark's Gospel, we already find others trying to cast out demons in Jesus' name, indicating the power people believed him to have. Turning to Satan more directly, Jesus refers to binding the strong man, or Satan, as the context makes clear, drawing from the language of Isaiah 49, 24 through 25. In Luke 10, Jesus flatly declares, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, as the disciples returned with joy and apparent surprise that demons were subjected to them because of the name of the Lord. In the book of Acts, misuse of Jesus' name had disastrous consequences, while exorcisms by sincere followers of Jesus continued by the power of his name. The picture is exceedingly clear. Jesus came to advance the kingdom of God, and with that advance, the ruler of this world has to retreat. For Jesus' followers, this is summed up nicely in 1 John 4.4. 4. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus' power over Satan is a clear, consistent, repeating theme in the New Testament. This raises the question, what happened by the time we get to Muhammad? Let's start with every Muslim's favorite part of history. In his Princeton PhD dissertation, Shahab Ahmed said, This study concludes that the Satanic Verses incident constituted a standard element in the historical memory of the Muslim community in the first 150 years of Islam, and was recorded by almost all prominent scholars working in the fields of Tafsir and Sirat Makazi. And in a later monograph, the Satanic Verses incident constituted a standard, widely circulated, and by that he means no less than 50 historical reports, and generally accepted element in the historical memory of the Muslim community on the life of Muhammad in the first two centuries of Islam. In other words, the universal rejection of the Satanic Verses incident by Islamic orthodoxy today represents the rejection of something that was held to be true by early Muslims. Let's listen to that last part again. In other words, the universal rejection of the Satanic Verses incident by Islamic orthodoxy today represents the rejection of something that was held to be true by early Muslims. According to the vast majority of Muslims, for the first 150 years, the Satanic Verses incident was a standard part of Muhammad's narrative. Today, Muslims universally reject the Satanic Verses. Why? Not because of historical reasons, but because of apologetic reasons. That's right. The same people who say Constantine wrote the New Testament, the Quran is miraculously preserved, and 
it was okay for wrinkly old Muhammad to sleep with a nine-year-old girl, those are the same ones saying that their prophet also did not recite satanic verses. Consider the source. To put it more bluntly, Muslims are embarrassed by their prophet. To help understand why, let's look at some more examples. In a story reported in numerous hadith, Muhammad was subjected to black magic. A Jewish man has put a spell on you, and such and such a well there is a knot that he tied for you. For those of you who aren't familiar with the background, what's being discussed here is called knot magic. That's K-N-O-T, knot magic. Hair was seen to have some power over a person. All you had to do was get some of that hair and tie it in knots while whispering spells over the knots as you tie them to bring that person under the magical spell. That happened to Muhammad, and all it took was a Jew and a hairbrush. Yep. But don't worry, Muhammad had that well where the magic was performed filled in, so you're safe. Oh wait, actually you're not. That's because Muhammad warned of Satan doing not magic to Muslims in their sleep. Muhammad's belief in magic is why he would practice various spells and rituals himself. What's ironic about this is that Muhammad had all kinds of protection against black magic. The Quran says surely he, referring to Satan, has no authority over those who believe and put their trust in their Lord. What's puzzling is that this verse apparently didn't do Muhammad much good, and there's also more that didn't help. For example, Jibril said he would pray for protection for Muhammad from evil, and Muhammad himself recited the last two surahs of the Quran for supernatural protection. Yet he still recited satanic verses, was afraid of Satan's not magic, and bewitched by a Jew wielding a hairbrush. But of course there's more. Muhammad blamed Satan for causing Muslims to forget how to lead prayers. Unfortunately, Muhammad himself forgot how to lead prayers. And of course, Satan is always threateningly near Muhammad's followers. They heard Satan's voice during battle, confusing them with disastrous results. Muslims must stand close together in the mosque so that Satan does not squeeze his way in between them. In addition to doing not magic in your hair at night, Satan also sleeps in your nose, which requires some additional cleansing of the nostrils. Speaking of additional cleansing, sleeping past the call to prayer indicates Satan has urinated in your ear. As expected, Satan is even threatening during sexual relations. Therefore, prayer is necessary during intercourse to protect the baby from Satan. What's really stunning in all of this is that even the times when you can pray to Allah are limited due to satanic activity. Want to pray to Allah as soon as you see the sunrise? Don't even think about it. I would suggest if you're a couple of minutes early for prayer and you're in that prohibited period, then you could simply spend a few more minutes just making sure that Satan is good and flushed out of your nose. Maybe that will be enough time to be safe from Satan when you pray to Allah. But wait, there's more. Muhammad lists further instructions for protecting oneself from Satan. The prophet said, When night falls, then keep your children close to you, for the devils spread out then. An hour later you can let them free and close the gates of your house, mention Allah's name, cover your utensils, and so forth. You can read the rest if you want. Great advice from Muhammad. Even yawning is a sign of satanic influence. Bad dreams, likewise, are from Satan. Muhammad's solution to a bad dream is obviously intuitive. Spit to the left. And finally, even the Hadith, the dumbest corpus of literature I've ever read and a constant source of embarrassment for modern Muslims, acknowledges Satan's powerlessness over Jesus. How ironic. Let's summarize this incredible decline from Jesus to Muhammad. Power over demons, that's a yes for Jesus and no for Muhammad. Overpowered by demons, no for Jesus and yes for Muhammad. Power over Satan, yes for Jesus, no for Muhammad. Overpowered by Satan, no for Jesus, yes for Muhammad. Recited satanic verses, that would be Muhammad. Warned against Satan's not magic, Muhammad used rituals and incantations. Muhammad had angelic intervention from evil, which still failed. Muhammad recited Quran as protection, which still failed. Muhammad influenced by Satan to forget prayers. That would be Muhammad warned against Satan standing next to you in the mosque. Remember, your shoulders are supposed to be tight together. That would be Muhammad. 
Warned against Satan sleeping in your nose? Guess who? Warned against Satan urinating in your ear? I bet you can guess that also. Warned to pray during intercourse? Yep, that would be Muhammad. Taught that Satan limits prayer times? Definitely not Jesus. Is our nighttime warnings about children and utensils? That would be Muhammad. Taught yawning is a sign of satanic influence. Muhammad taught that bad dreams are from Satan, which is why you spit to your left. That would be Muhammad. And followers are taught to live in fear of satanic influence. Jesus, no. Muhammad, yes. So what changed between Jesus and Muhammad? Did Satan become much more powerful? Or did Allah's alleged prophets suddenly get very lousy around the 7th century? Why was Jesus so powerful over Satan and Muhammad so powerless? Why do Jesus' followers believe greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world, while the followers of Muhammad are taught that Satan is lurking around every corner, trying to subdue them with black magic and sleeping in their noses? The correct answer to this question is that there is no relevant continuity between Jesus and Muhammad, or Muhammad and the rest of the biblical prophets, for that matter. Looking at Jesus versus Muhammad versus Satan is one of many ways to demonstrate this. That's all for now, but remember to keep Satan out of your nose, and don't pray right at sunrise or sunset. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.